Puzzle and Dragons is an awesome free-to-play game where you match orbs in order to collect and beat up monsters ranging from tiny elemental blobs to gods that created the universe. And Hello Kitty for some reason. Homestuck is a web series about a group of otherwise ordinary kids that play a game and eventually grow to become gods of a new universe. Also, Sweet Bro and Hella Jeff exist. Yes, these two properties are very good and have their own respective fan base. But what if we put them together? We create. My God! We create! Probably something like this. This is cool. Puzzle Stuck. When you first start the game, you'll be informed that Puzzle Stuck does not work in Google Chrome, and that you'll have to copy the address and paste it in Firefox in order to play. When you actually start the game, you'll be given a choice of one of the four beta humans, John Egbert, Rosalind, Dave Strider, and Jade Harley. You'll also get to choose any one of the 12 beta trolls to be your patron troll. They'll join you early on in the game, followed by one of the human characters you didn't pick. I chose Rose as my starting character because of how much of an intellectual badass she was in Homestead. And I also picked Terezi for pretty much the same reason. Except she's also kind of crazy! Right after we choose our characters, we're thrust into the game with a quick tutorial on how to play. It's quite simple, really. You have a board filled with orbs. You can switch the position of two adjacent orbs by clicking an orb and dragging in the desired direction. You can swap any two orbs, even if they don't make a match, but you only have 4 seconds after your first move to make as many matches as you can. If any matches you make match the color of your character in your party, they'll deal damage. Also, you can multiply the damage dealt by making larger and larger combos. Does any of this sound familiar? If you've ever played Puzzle and Dragons, it should, as this game is essentially Puzzle and Dragons with a homestuck coat of paint. There are a few differences in gameplay mechanics, though. As you match orbs, they'll be collected and stored down here. If you have enough orbs, you can exchange them for a percentage of your health back, or you can use one of your character's abilities to heal, deal damage, reduce enemy defense, or even change up the board. There's also these skull orbs that, when matched, allow your entire party to attack, but they do not count as colored orbs. Wait, skull orbs? Where did these come from? Why don't they look like cherub skulls? Why are they not, I don't know, little cow orbs? You know, anything that would make sense in the context of Homestuck? After you beat the first level, which is your home on Earth, you'll be given your character's respective color sprite, and then you'll most likely have to go back to Earth, because you aren't a high enough level to progress. Whoa. Okay, now we're level 11. Terezi has joined our team, and we got a message saying that Dave will join us after we beat Suburb. Wait, wait, are you kidding? Have you actually seen Suburb, Dave? This game will eat you up! People die playing this game! Like, actually die! Well, it says the difficulty is easy, so maybe it won't be so bad? Okay, just gotta beat up these low-level minions, then after a quick wee try, we can go beat up this giant, and then we fight the- w Wait, that's it? Huh. They made this look way harder in Homestuck. Well, now Dave has joined our team, and we can access the Dream Bubbles, so I'm not complaining. The Dream Bubbles will serve as our main supply of additional characters, specifically the two remaining beta kids, the 11 beta trolls that we're also missing, and trust me, we will want to get all 12 beta trolls, and the four alpha kids. Just simply defeat the character that appears, and you'll unlock them. Alright, who am I fighting now? Beverly? And she's got tier to Witch of Life? And she's happy to see us! And now she's dead. Now that we've beaten the dream bubbles at least once, we've unlocked Scrub? The troll session? Wasn't that completely destroyed by an angry black dog man with tentacles and wings? You know what? I should probably stop questioning the continuity of this game. Half of the encounters at this point I'm pretty sure exist just for the sake of gameplay. Ah, uh, yes. I fondly remember the time when Dave struggled to combat the Elder Witch Princess doll. It was one of my favorite moments in the entire series, right up there with the part where Rose enters the game and S Cascade. The scrub level is quite unique in that it's actually 12 different levels bundled together, with each planet in the session representing one of the 12 troll players. The catch with these levels is that, in order to play them, you need to have that troll in your current party, hence why you'll want to go back to the dream bubbles until you have all 12. 
Each level has only four fights, with the final fight being against the planet's denizen. For the most part, the denizens are brutal and unforgiving. If you are not prepared, you will die. They all have different attacks and abilities. Some have extremely high armor to tank your hits, some will change your orbs that are available to you, a few will try to kill you in one hit, and one will erase all the orbs you have stored up, rendering your abilities defunct. Although I found Echidna to be pretty easy. I mean, all she did was deal 10 damage to my party each turn, and that was about it. But! Should you manage to overcome the challenges laid before you, and defeat a denizen, you'll be rewarded with their blessing, which will grant you a certain boon while in combat. Note that you can only have one blessing active at once. Once you've beaten one level of scrub, you'll unlock the planet Alternia, where you can go to challenge all the trolls' ancestors. And before we move on, I just wanted to break off and address a few problems I have with the game thus far. First off, there's no sound. At all. Not even a few notes of music, or a ding that plays when you match orbs. I guess we could remedy this by downloading the Lofam and Before Us albums and playing them on iTunes? Second, the way you unlock characters. This is more of a minor nitpick than it is an actual problem with the game. Heck, it's not even the game's fault, it's just that no one on the internet has bothered to explain how to unlock all the additional characters. So I figured I might as well list how to do that right here. Here we go! To unlock each of the beta kid sprites, you need to play through their level on Earth with them in your party. I reiterate, you need to play through their level on Earth. Sounds simple, right? Well, it is. However, the levels on Earth are chosen randomly, and if you beat the wrong level, you WON'T unlock a new sprite. And yes, while it is true that you can exit the level and retry until you get the right one, I feel like you shouldn't have to do that in the first place. Each of the sprites will quickly hit their level cap and advance to the next stage twice. Once the beta kids have ascended to god tier, you can unlock their guardians by playing through Earth again. But make sure you're playing through the correct level again. Why, game? I just want to unlock Mama Lond in all her drunken glory! Is that too much to ask? The guardians have a max level of 1, meaning they're already as powerful as they can get. The beta trolls' ancestors can be unlocked by defeating them on Alternia. Nothing fancy there, they all have high cost abilities and their max level is 70. All of the beta and alpha kids, as well as all 12 beta trolls, can be obtained by defeating them in the dream bubbles. Roxy and Equius both have a ridiculous amount of health and armor, so avoid fighting them until you have higher level characters with the right abilities. Jake also has ridiculous armor, but he's... well... Jake. And finally, the beta trolls bestial custodians and sprites, Jade's grandfather, the alpha trolls, the alpha kid sprites, Calliope and Caliborn, the midnight crew, the cast of Problem Sleuth, or any of the Carapashian characters do not exist in this game. And you know your Homestuck fan game has a problem when it doesn't include the mayor, aka the best character in this whole series. Okay, I think I'm done rambling for now. Let's go to Alternia. Holy crow, it's the handmaiden! What do I do? 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 Oh. This actually isn't quite as hard as I thought it would be. Okay, now I'm fighting Red Glare, and I feel the difficulty is starting to ramp up a little, but otherwise, I think I might be able to clear Alternia on my first try. Okay, never mind what I said. This game is really hard now, because the Grand High Blood is a freaking concrete wall, and I am going to die. Tell me a joke. A joke? Uh, knock knock banana? Good news is, even though I lost, all the characters in my party still gained enough EXP to advance to God tier, and I unlocked all the other ancestors that we fought as playable characters. Fast forward through several hours of gameplay! Now that I've unlocked every single character, except the last three troll ancestors, defeated every denizen, and did some grinding in between, I'm ready to take on the harsh combatants of Alternia one more time! Turns out, you can use Mindfang's spider bite to take out the Grand Highblood in practically one hit. 
And once you've gotten past Orphan or Dual Scar, all that's left is her. Oh. Um. As I was saying. One more time! Once you've beaten everyone else, all that's left is Betty Crocker, or I mean her imperious condescension. And it turns out she's actually not that tough if you have a good party and you know what you're doing. But whatever, defeat here, good level, unlock the battle witch, and that's it! We've beaten the game! Wait, what's this green moon? Stop by for a friendly game of table stick ball? Difficulty final boss? Oh! Oh! So, for the final of the game, you are tasked with putting together three different teams in order to fight each and every member of the felt, including Snowman, whom you cannot kill because otherwise the universe ends, Doc Scratch, whom you totally should kill because he's an omniscient jerk, and of course, Lord English himself. <sighs> Let's roll.